Let's move now to discussing the reduction of compounds containing carbon-nitrogen double or triple bonds, which is another method for the synthesis of amines. And just really quickly to review what we mean by reduction, the idea here is that reduction is the addition of hydrogen, often quote-unquote H2, not always H2 per se. H2 is not always used as a reagent, but nonetheless we add, for example, H plus and H minus in the course of a reduction. And if we reduce a compound containing, for example, a carbon-nitrogen double bond, the resulting structure is an amine with a carbon-nitrogen single bond now in the product. So here, for example, the addition of H2 leads to the formation of an amine from a starting material with a carbon-nitrogen double bond. And this is reduction. And it's just the opposite, really, in a sense, of the oxidation that we've talked about previously, which amounted to the elimination of H2. If you look back at the video on disulfides, you'll see that there. Reduction is often the addition of H2 rather than the elimination of H2, which corresponds to the reverse oxidation. This example on the bottom is really a part of what's called reductive amination, which we'll look at in detail in a future video. The one example I wanted to look at here for now is the reduction of nitriles. Nitriles often are made from the cyanide anion in an SN2 step, and so sort of similar to a ZID in a way, we can use the nitrile anion as a nucleophile to establish a substitute nitrile that we then reduce to a primary amine. And the thing to notice about this process is that the cyanide anion, or the cyano group in the starting nitrile, becomes an NH2 group, and so the amine must be primary, and the carbon linked to the amine is also a primary carbon. By starting with the nitrile, which contains a carbon-nitrogen triple bond, and treating with lithium aluminum hydride, which for our purposes amounts to H-, minus, quote unquote, a nucleophilic source of hydrogen, the product we ultimately get is the primary amine, where two of the hydrogens, those linked to the carbon atom, came from the lithium aluminum hydride reagent. So these hydrogens here correspond to these hydrogens here. The two hydrogens on nitrogen generally come from workup, and so you may see this written, for example, as a two-step process where lithium aluminum hydride is used first, and then acidic workup is written as a second step, which actually furnishes the neutral amine product. And just really quickly to show how we might get to this nitrile starting from cyanide, we could, for example, alkylate cyanide using, oh, let's say, an alkyl iodide like this to get to this nitrile. This does rely on an SN2 reaction, so we also need to be mindful of the substitution pattern at this carbon here, which ends up being this carbon here in the product. But nonetheless, this is a, an effective method, especially for forming relatively unhindered primary amines. Finally, we're going to end our discussion of synthetic methods for amines by looking at two rearrangements which start from compounds containing a carbonyl group linked to nitrogen. And the reason I've kind of left the nitrogen open is what it, the nitrogen is linked to tends to be a little bit off the wall, but we'll see the details on this slide and the next. The first example we're going to look at is called the Hoffman rearrangement. And the idea here is we start with a primary amide with an NH2 group linked to a carbonyl group. And we treat that with hydroxide base, and it's going to serve as a base, and elemental halogen. And what this does is through, first of all, a proton transfer step that occurs at the most acidic position in the molecule, which is the amide nitrogen, followed by an SN2 step actually at one of the atoms of the elemental hydrogen, we install a nitrogen, in this case bromine, or more generally nitrogen-halogen bond. This is an intermediate under the reaction conditions, and it reacts further spontaneously. Its further reaction is a rather bizarre-looking rearrangement step in which the carbon R group migrates to nitrogen, bromide is kicked off, and just to make the resulting intermediate look nice, we can use this lone pair on nitrogen really in a resonance sense to create a bond between carbon and nitrogen. The resulting structure looks like this. I'm going to represent that carbonyl carbon just with a dot right here. And the R group, which has migrated, is now connected to nitrogen. And the nitrogen still bears a hydrogen. And so this is positively charged, as it must be since we kicked off bromide in this step as well. 
If we wanted to put a label on this elementary step, I would call it one, two rearrangement. That's what the R group is doing, plus SN2, which is what's happening from the nitrogen's perspective. A nucleophile, which is really the migrating sigma bond, right? The electrons in this bond are acting as a nucleophile or electron source, is attacking the nitrogen, and a leaving group, the bromide, is departing. And that establishes a new nucleophile nitrogen bond in the product, which I've highlighted in red as well. At this point, water enters the picture. And although we certainly could draw a general mechanism for this process, I'm just going to kind of cop out here and say that water adds to this intermediate. And just to make charge balance, we'll lose a proton from the intermediate. And the resulting structure looks like this. Our original OCNR structure is in, still intact, OCNR, but water has added, so there's a new carbon-oxygen bond here. And what happens at this point is a process that cleaves this bit off of this intermediate to give the primary amine. Ultimately, one way to think about this is the primary amine has the capacity to serve as a leaving group, and when it does so, and when it's protonated, we end up at the primary amine product. And so the Hoffman rearrangement is a nice way to make primary amines. Thinking about this from a very general perspective, essentially what we've done is we've lost the carbonyl group that sits between the nitrogen and the R group, and a bond has formed between the R group and the nitrogen. And what's interesting is that the nitrogen, in a sense, acts as an electrophile during this bond formation process. We can compare that arrow I just drew in black with the curved arrow down here showing the migration of the R group. The electron flow is toward nitrogen now rather than away from nitrogen, which tends to be backwards with respect to the amine syntheses we've seen previously. One other thing that's worth mentioning, just because I feel a bit unsatisfied with how I handled this last step, is that water plays a role in the cleavage of this carboxylate group from this intermediate. And this is an example of what's called hydrolysis. We'll see many examples of water acting as a nucleophile in hydrolysis reactions in the future, so I wanted to mention it here. The courteous rearrangement is conceptually related to the Hoffman rearrangement, but uses acyl azids instead of the NBr intermediates that were generated in the reaction mixture that we saw in the Hoffman rearrangement. And so we can start from an acyl azid and just use heat and water to get straight to the primary amine. So this is still a rearrangement of a compound containing a carbonyl group linked to nitrogen. It's just the group linked to nitrogen is now no longer a halogen, but an N2 fragment. So to start this off, I'm going to draw a resonance structure of the acyl azid that we can use to draw an analogy to what we just saw. If I push electrons down onto this nitrogen and from the negatively charged nitrogen over to here, such that this nitrogen is anionic in the resulting resonance form, we now have a single bond between the nitrogen closest to the carbonyl group and the central nitrogen. And that central nitrogen is now positively charged. Compare this to the structure we generated during the Hoffman rearrangement. The idea there was that bromide is a good leaving group, and so Br could depart with a pair of electrons to facilitate this rearrangement that ultimately forged the carbon-carbon bond. In fact, we have a similar situation in the acyl azid built in right from the start. This N2 plus fragment is a good leaving group because it's positively charged, and so it wants to take the electrons in the NN bond and get out of dodge. Once you see this analogy, I think it's a lot easier to understand how the courteous rearrangement works if you've studied the Hoffman rearrangement previously, because what's going to happen at this point is exactly analogous to what we saw in the Hoffman rearrangement the alkyl group is going to migrate from the carbonyl carbon to nitrogen, and the N2 plus group is going to depart with a pair of electrons. And just for the purposes of making the resulting intermediate look nice, we can draw electron flow from this nitrogen back toward the carbonyl carbon, which is going to leave all the atoms in that structure neutral. So the intermediate that results from this has oxygen doubly bound to carbon still, which is now doubly bound to nitrogen, and that R group has migrated, and let's once again highlight the electrons involved in that carbon R bond that becomes a nitrogen R bond. These electrons end up here. This intermediate is highly analogous to the intermediate we saw in the Hoffman rearrangement, and so as you might imagine, 
water causes the same type of elementary steps to occur through a series of additions and eliminations, which ultimately result in the kicking off of nitrogen as a leaving group or nucleophage, which overall we can describe as a hydrolysis process, the primary amine is generated. And so just like the Hoffman rearrangement, the Curtius rearrangement can be used to synthesize primary amines. The nice thing about this is it takes a little bit fewer reagents. If you can set up the acyl zid, all you have to do is heat it and it will rearrange spontaneously to this and then treatment with water will give the primary amine quite straightforwardly. We can avoid the use of base and elemental halogen, for example, which are not the friendliest conditions in the world.